Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to make this really lovely chunky knot wall hanging. I think it's called a pipper knot or a piper knot, I'm not really sure how you pronounce it but either way I love it and I love the chunky cord as well. So here is what you'll need. You'll need one length of 450cm length of cord. I'm using a 10mm twisted chunky macrame cord which I'll have linked in the description, the exact one that I used because I really love this one. You'll need some scissors. These are the ones that I sell on my website and on my Etsy shop. I'll have them linked down below as well. They come in either this matte black or a metallic gold. You'll need some fabric glue to secure it all together or you could hand sew it if you wanted. A tape measure. And let's get started. So first of all we're going to grab one end and we're going to grab our tape measure and we're going to measure in 60 centimeters from that end. So this is what we're going to create our loop with. Here I've got a 60 centimeter point in my hand and then we're just going to twist it round so that the longer cord is on the left here and the short cord is on the right and just twist it round to form this loop at the top here so the short cord goes on top of the longer cord and then we're going to create the bottom part here so the short cord will go underneath the long cord and around to form this shape so this is the base of the knot and then with the long cord we're going to coil it on the inside of that shorter cord just like you see me doing here make sure it sits nice and flush against that cord like that just take your time with it well, then we're going to put the cord underneath the loop and tighten it around just like this and that will help keep the loop in place as well and then we're going to follow the last rope so coil it on the inside so that the ropes lay nice and flat next to each other making sure that there's no big gaps in between the ropes either see I'm just taking my time to make sure it's nice and neat so this is a crucial part And then again, just putting the cord underneath the loop, bringing it around, and then again we're coiling it around inside, and just continue doing that, making sure that all the cords lay nice and flat next to each other, there's not any big gaps. So once you've continued all that you should come to the middle point like this just going to do one last wrap so you can see the loop part looks nice and knotted as well so we've just got one tiny little hole in the middle now which we're going to pass the end of the cord through so just do it nice and gently because obviously it's difficult all the ropes aren't attached yet so i just slide mine to the end of the table so it's easier to do it without all the ropes unraveling just gently pull that through just to finish off the knot. Now you can see the knot has been formed you can go ahead and just take your time and tighten everything up tighten all the ropes make sure there's no big gaps like so. Now what we're going to try and do is flip this over so it's kind of difficult to do that what I done is sandwiched it in between my hands and then just flipped it so I took one slid it to the end of the table put my hand underneath and flipped it round just like that and now it's time to glue everything together so it doesn't unravel so I'm just going to go in between all the ropes here and just put a little dab of glue just to hold it together you don't have to go overboard with the glue it's just going to be enough just to hold it together and make it nice and secure don't put too much glue in otherwise it will come through to the front and look messy then I'm going to go around the coil part of the knot and just dab in between each rows like you see here so I think that's enough for me, just going to let that dry for a few hours so you can then do the next part. So now that it's been drying for about 8 hours actually, I left it overnight, it should all have held together nicely. So with this end piece of rope here, the piece that sticks down, you could either cut it and have no rope showing, which would look something like this. Which is quite nice, or you could create another loop like you did at the top just to mirror that loop 
which I think looks nice and symmetrical as well. Or you can do what I'm going to do, which is have a few long hanging cords dangling from the bottom and then I'm going to unravel them to give them a nice texture. So I'm just taking my scissors just to snip the sellotape that's on the end of the cord there. And then I'm just going to unravel it. So as this is a three ply twisted rope, it will unravel into three groups of cords like that. So I'm just going to grab the rest of my cord and I'm just going to do general measurements by eye and just cut it and then unravel it and glue it to the back of it where I think it would look nice. And that is how I'm going to complete this wall hanging. And I'm just going to do it all by eye. So if I think I need a longer bit, I'll cut off a longer bit like this one here. And then I'm just going to arrange that under the wall hanging where I think it would look nice. And then again, I'm going to try and flip it over so we can glue all the cords together on the back. Just like that. So in order to keep these in place, I'm just going to stick a bit of sellotape over the top of them just to hold it down. And then we can flip them over just to make sure it looks the way we want it to look. So I'm just going to play around with it, make sure it's how I like it. And then flip it round and I'm going to glue these cords down. I'm just going to flip the cords up, put some dabs of glue onto the wall hanging, just like so, and then I'm going to flip all the cords down and put another bit of sellotape on just to hold them down to put a bit of weight on it, just so they have nice contact with the glue and the wall hanging so everything's nice and secure. See I'm just using the back of the glue to push it down as well. Oh, bit of glue seeped through there but that's fine. And then I'm just going to let that dry and add more cords if needed. In the end I added some more cords on so I added about five cords in total to the back because I wanted it to look a bit more full. Now your wall hanging is finished it's time to just go and hang it up by that loop at the top and admire your nice handmade macrame knot wall hanging. I also think this would look really lovely in a single twist cord however I do love the texture that the three ply cord gives. So if you do recreate this, please be sure to tag me on Instagram at LunarCraftOnline because I really love to see your wall hanging. And as always, you can leave any tutorial suggestions in the comments down below. And if you could like, subscribe or comment, that would really help me out. And I really hope you have a lovely week. Bye!